Hello my friends. Let me share with you a new watering system that I hope to be more reliable than the drip tube system. First I need to make a water reserve. I'm going to use a half barrel for this. I'm laying out reference marks. This is where I'm going to cut. Drill a pilot hole large enough to get the blade of your saw into it. I'm using standard plumbing parts. This is the flapper valve and the drain that is used in commodes. As the barrel fills with water, this standpipe will be submerged and it will drain, so it has to be blocked so it won't drain. Drill a hole close to the side for this uh, flapper valve unit. Assemble the drain unit on the inside, making sure that you have the rubber gasket on the inside of the barrel. A threaded coupler is needed to be able to connect the elbows to the unit. I found that a half inch pipe fits perfect inside the stand pipe and I'm cutting it to the height of the barrel so that the water won't be able to get into that stand pipe. The flushing water chamber is going to be fabricated in my shop. Here I'm using a piece of fiberglass rod from a broken fishing rod. The taper on this rod will allow me to slide it into holes that I will drill and drive it in to be a wedged fit so it will lock in real tight. I'm making a cap onto this unit so that sunlight won't get in and uh, cause algae to grow. This hole will be where the fiberglass rod will be inserted. When I finish with the cap, it will be a twist lock. Reference the two halves so that it can be returned to the original position. Insert the fiberglass rod as far as you can and wedge it in. Mark reference lines about a quarter inch out. This is going to be the tabs that will lock the cap on. drilling the cap to make the locking mechanism. You can see here when I finish that the slot that I am making is going to be L-shaped. Do this to both sides, making sure that you have the L facing in the same direction on both ends. If you noticed, I cut the width of the caps, both top and bottom, in half to decrease the weight of this uh, water chamber.
test fitting the vertical slots to make sure that I have them in the right position. Now I need to smooth them out. My file won't fit inside these horizontal slots, so I'm going to use my pen knife to trim these out. Perfect fit. Now I need to make a center hanging bracket. A hole for the fill tube needs to be drilled. You have to make sure that you don't put the hole over top of where the fiberglass rods are and the hole should be close to one of the sides. This is the unit that will go through the barrel and then into the water chamber. I'm laying out drill holes for the hanging bracket. A piece of copper wire is going to be bent into U-shape, inserted into these holes, and wired on the underside to make a hanging loop. The bottom of this water chamber has to have a drain tube. I drilled a snug hole and inserted a copper tube into it. Using a point at all, I'm inserting into the end and I'm rolling it to start flaring the end of that tube, making it funnel shaped. And I will continue doing this with a larger tool until I can peen the end over. I'm using a center punch to flare it even more. Finally, to make it really tight, I'm using the ball on the end of this glass cutter. It 
It seems to work perfect. I'm building a structure to support this half barrel which will hold 30 gallons of water and an estimated about 200 pounds of weight. Any interior structure that you put into your greenhouse, you should paint white for light reflection. This is the overflow that will fill the water chamber. I cut a length of plexiglass to use as this lever. The water flushing chamber is heavy and it needs to have a counterweight to balance it. Here I'm using a cup and I'm pouring pea gravel into it to see what weight I will need to counterbalance the chamber. I'm weighing this cup now to decide on the weight that I need for my counterbalance. This black iron pipe elbow is the perfect weight. The mechanism has to be checked and double checked to make sure that things are going to function smoothly. The five gallon bucket that I have in here is so that I don't have to keep running so much water each time I make the test. The flapper valve will remain open until the water chamber completely drains. I'm using a downward facing elbow so that when the water is running through this uh, overflow. It won't be allowing anything that's floating on the surface to enter into the water chamber. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.